Hi everyone, welcome to Carpe Diem Sailing. My name is Marco, I'm the Sail Canada Cruising Instructor, and in today's video we'll be talking about the benefits of being able to skillfully reverse your boat. This video is an excerpt from our Docking Made Easy online course, available at www.carpediumsailing.com. It is Lesson 3 of a 12-lesson course. So why this lesson now? And why am I emphasizing this skill in particular so strongly? There are numerous benefits to being able to skillfully and confidently operate your boat in reverse. In my mind, the most important of these is that it doubles your options when selecting an approach. More specifically, here are some other excellent reasons for having the ability to back up in control. Wind. Remember weather veining? It's easier to back slowly into a strong wind with finer control. There's no risk of the bow blowing off like there would be if you came in bow first into a strong wind. Prop walk. Prop walk has no effect once the boat is moving and has reached steerage way. It's just as easy to dock on port as on starboard. Easier departure. You're set up for an easier exit in forward when leaving the marina. An unfamiliar marina. Backing in under control and then pulling out in forward if necessary is easier than driving in then having to back out. Visibility. You can more easily see where you're going. Anchoring. You need to be able to back up under control for many anchoring procedures. Modern boats, easier to step on and off through the transom. Some key points to keep in mind whenever you're backing up, firm grip. Always keep a firm grip on the tiller or the wheel whenever you're reversing. The pressure on the back of the rudder is very forceful and will want to push the rudder to one side or the other. Failure to keep a firm grip on the helm can result in personal injury or damage to your boat. Look forward. You're automatically going to look back to see where you're going, but it's just as important to also look forward. Use the bow sway as an indicator of helm response. I like to stand sideways so I can easily see forward and back. Be patient. Remember, prop walk will disappear once the boat reaches steerage way. Give yourself lots of room and time to work. We'll start this lesson with a demonstration and commentary from the helm. Traditionally, sailboats have a notorious reputation for being difficult to reverse or to steer in reverse, difficult to back up, uh, partly due to the effect of the prop walk. Also, this boat directly ahead of us is an example of an old style full keel heavy displacement boat. They had long full keels and um, fairly small rudders, so they were quite difficult to steer in reverse. A modern full keel spade rudder sailboat um, will actually steer in reverse quite well. The things to remember are the prop walk. Once the boat starts to move fast enough in reverse, so the steerage way, the prop walk is then negated. The rudder takes over and the boat will steer. The problem we have is that if we oversteer, so we're going too fast or we're putting in too much steering input, the boat will, the, the front of the boat will, will oversteer and so it'll skid off. Once that momentum is going, it's really difficult to bring it back. So I'm going to give some examples right now of the boat oversteering. From the overhead footage, you'll actually see the ripples coming off the bow as it skids over. So right now I'm going back to full right starboard rudder and I'm just going to go full stop to full stop a few times just to give an idea you can see that bow sway so this is full right rudder and now I'm centered to where I want to be I'm going to go full left rudder but you'll see how the boat will actually oversteer a little bit and then start to respond so one of the problems here is that again like I said the oversteering makes it very difficult to control. 
So I am going fairly fast for the demonstration. I'm going to slow down now and I'm going to slow my steering down. So on our boat, on this boat, a quarter turn of helm is about 10 degrees. So right now my helm is centered and you see how long it takes for the boat to actually stop, for the bow to stop swaying over to the port. And that's because of that momentum that it generated. Now that we've seen what it looks like from the helm, let's take a look at the mechanics of oversteering. We'll revisit this picture of the boat's underwater profile. Once again, the lack of lateral resistance below the waterline forward of the keel will play a part. In this animated sequence, the boat begins reversing with the rudder turned aggressively to port. Once the boat develops steerage way, the helm begins to swing, in this case, to starboard. This is the bow sway I keep referring to. As the boat turns, the rudder is centered in anticipation of settling onto our new course, but the combination of turning momentum and the lack of lateral resistance results in a dramatic oversteer or skid. In fact, this is much like a car skidding on icy or wet roads. In the aerial footage coming up, you will very clearly see a slick of disturbed water as the bow slides sideways across the surface of the water. Here you see the aerial footage of a sailboat reversing and steering aggressively full stop to full stop. You'll see the slick start to develop and here you can see the bow definitely start to swing off. And there is the slick I'm talking about right there which is the bow sliding across the surface. And once the bow breaks loose like that, it takes quite a bit of effort to bring it back once you start steering the other way. So now I'm going to steer about 10 degrees to port, which is a quarter turn of my helm. And I'm holding a firm grip on the wheel so it doesn't get ripped out of my hands because the pressure on that rudder as you're backing up can pull the rudder, pull the wheel out of your hands. So you can see right now, 10 degrees of, of rudder isn't much, and I'm slowing down, but I'm steering quite effectively. Now I'm gonna bring my wheel back to center. It's gonna oversteer a little bit, and then I'm gonna go quarter turn, 10 degrees to starboard. And granted, there's no wind right now. The stronger the wind, depending on whether you're going into it, or it's on your bow will cause different problems or it might make it easier, might make it harder. The goal in controlled steering is to prevent the oversteer by limiting steering input and anticipating early. This is an example of steering in control. You can see the path of disturbed water at the bow as the boat turns, but it's not displaying that large slick of the bow skidding across the surface of the previous example. At times, you may need to steer aggressively and that's fine, as long as you understand that when you do, you have to be ready to control the swing of the bow. I also want to emphasize once more that whenever you're backing up, to keep a very firm grip on the wheel or tiller, as personal injury or rudder damage could result otherwise. Here is an example of a real-world application of this important skill. Entering an unfamiliar marina. This occasionally happens if you can't contact staff for a slip assignment. In cases like this, start backing up from well out. Remember, prop walk will be gone and you will have control. If you have to leave, it's much easier to drive out and forward than to deal with prop walk as you try to back out of a tight space. So that's it again for this lesson. I hope you found it helpful. We'll see you back here soon for lesson four, preparation for arrival. Until then, we wish you fair winds and following seas.
And that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you have subscribed and would like to be notified of new releases, make sure to click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button. And why not check out our website for more comprehensive online courses. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I wish you all fair winds and following seas. Be sure to check back soon for our next video on how to read tide tables. The video will include a time lapse of a 14.4 foot tide. See you then.